All right, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, in today's session, we are going to talk about our GA release 4.13. What are the new features and enhancements we have come up with in this update? Um, my name is Jaiti. I lead product marketing at Amyo. Uh, in this session, our host is Sapna Nagi, who leads the product marketing uh, for our contact center. Um, we also have subject matter experts uh, joining us. So I'll give the screen to Sapna now. Uh, thanks, Jyoti, uh, for joining. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, this is Sapna Nadi from Product Marketing Team. Uh, and I just welcome you all to this session today. Uh, so this webinar, as Jyoti told you, is uh, going to be around the new features and updates that are going to be available for from our latest release, that is 4.13. Uh, we have chosen uh, you know, some updates uh, from this, uh, from this release that we thought are important to understand for our customers and partners. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's start the session with our uh, subject matter experts. Uh, we uh, do have some product managers with us. Um, we have Aman, uh, Piyush, and Anuj um, who have joined us as subject matter experts today, and uh, they'll all be addressing your queries uh, that we'll receive during the session. Okay, so uh, before we start it off, I request all of you to please uh, drop in your queries in the chat section and we'll uh, definitely try to pick them all at the end of the session. And um, if in case your queries are not addressed in the session, you can uh, definitely uh, drop them at our email addresses that I'll mention in the uh, last slide. Okay, so let me just start this off uh, with the agenda. So this is the agenda of the session. Uh, we are going to understand uh, the new features and updates. Uh, we'll be discussing around, uh, you know, what's the um, new features and updates and enhancements that we are going to have in the product line. Uh, then we'll be discussing uh, some use cases and see how these new features and updates can help them, you know, improve the processes. Um, uh, then we'll be talking about uh, some business benefits. We'll be seeing how, you know, businesses can implement these updates in their current processes and uh, you know see uh, some uh, business benefits for sure so this is going to be agenda uh, to be the agenda of this session so uh, coming on to our first update which is instagram direct as a new chat uh, source so uh, with this uh, you know recently instagram has launched its uh, direct message apis for all the third party applications in order to you know facilitate businesses or brands to connect with their customers via private chat so with this uh, businesses uh, can you know integrate their instagram business account with their contact center software so that you know all the chats can be handled in uh, you know one place and in an efficient way so uh, that's the reason why this update is coming up um, so with this update what we'll be able to do is um, we'll be able to, you know, show Instagram Direct as a new chat source uh, in a mail, and it will be available, you know, in the uh, listed pages and tabs, which you can see on my screen right now. Uh, these tabs will be uh, ticket listing tab, ticket details tab, chat window, dashboards, and reports. So, um, if in case you got some chat through Instagram Direct, you'll be able to see the icon uh, of Instagram Direct, and you'll be able to see the source name as well on these tabs and pages. So, um, yeah, uh, what we wanted with this update and what we had in our mind when we uh, thought about this update was, you know, uh, we wanted to, uh, to implement this because, you know, there are so many businesses who have uh, millennials at, as their customers and millennials have their first choice as Instagram and they always love to uh, or prefer to, you know, uh, communicate with their businesses uh, through Instagram today. So that is the reason that we have brought this feature in. And um, there can be some uh, short, short business usability and, and you know, benefits uh, with this particular update. So, uh, first of all, uh, all channels can be handled efficiently together in one place. And that's one. And another uh, business benefit can be, you know, lesser wait time. Uh, when we have everything in one place, we don't have to toggle as agents or as workbench uh, users. We don't have to toggle between the screens. We can just uh, get all the charts in one place. And we can, you know, work efficiently. Uh, again, this will also, uh, you know, enhance our customer experience for sure. So these are some of the business benefits uh, that we could see with this particular update. 
uh, coming on to our second update or enhancement in the system which is uh, delete or hide customer posts and comments uh, guys if you have any questions around any uh, you know update or feature that i'm talking about you can just directly put in your queries in the chat section or q a section uh, okay so talking about this particular update which is delete or hide customer posts and comments um, so this particular update enables a business to hide or delete the customer post or comment as the name suggests um, so these posts uh, you know might be defaming uh, you know the brand's reputation or can create a negative impact on the brand that's why the brand uh, wants to delete or hide such uh, posts and comments right so with this update uh, such situations can be taken care of and uh, this can be deleted or hidden by uh, the workbench users so we give them uh, the empowerment of doing that uh, in just one click so they can delete or hide the posts that are defaming their brand's reputation right so uh, also to keep a fair track on such deletion or hiding of the posts uh, what we have done is uh, we have uh, you know uh, we have given this provision to uh, maintain the history of, of what has been deleted what was the post that has been deleted or hidden uh, who deleted or uh, you know Uh, hit this post or comment, and what was the post or comment that was deleted? Uh, when it was deleted, the time and the date, everything will be available in the system. The all this information will be stored to keep a fair track of uh, you know what was done and why it was done. Everything uh, will be stored in the system. So yeah, uh, for a hidden comment, uh, all the trailing comments also get hidden um, so that you know we we know that you know uh, if a comment is hidden, that is. that is being hidden for a purpose so all the trailing comments are meant to be hidden uh, as well so all the trailing comments will be hidden um for the hiding of a post or comment is also reversible if uh, if a post has been hidden by mistake uh, uh, you know by a workbench user that action can definitely be reversed or uh, that can be uh, you know uh, reversed so in one click uh, he can just undo his action uh, for example a customer posted on xyz food aggregator company's uh, fb page um, so uh, this post uh, had some you know foul language or was defaming the company's reputation so a ticket will get uh, generated for this post and this will be assigned to uh, me as an agent or a workbench or user so i'll be able to hide or delete this post and the system will store uh, you know some important information about this uh, action that i have taken on this post to comment so uh, the post that i have deleted will be Uh, the details and mentions of that post will be stored in the system uh, apart from this the time and date uh, when i deleted this post will be stored in the system. and uh, my details as an agent or as a workbench user to identify you know who took the action on this particular post or comment uh, to delete this uh, that will also be stored in the system right so this is uh, about the update and uh, why we have done this is of course uh, because we wanted brands to uh, you know handle situations where their reputation is being you know defamed by foul language posts and comments so you we wanted to handle such uh, we wanted to empower businesses to handle such situation that's why we have come come up with this particular update uh, so this screenshot that you are seeing right now on my screen uh, shows you know um the update history of a particular post or comment so uh, it shows uh, you know the status that you know the comment has been hidden by this particular uh, agent or workbench user so the information is also uh, shown here so everything will be shown here everything will be stored in the system so you don't lose track on what has happened and why you know an agent or a workbench user took this action on a particular uh, post or comment so you will be seeing them all in the system everything will be stored right so um, apart from all the benefits that we discussed uh, so far there's another benefit uh, that we could think of is you know it helps businesses to work on their services and products based on such negative comments so if a business gets some negative comments they always have have the uh, scope of improvements and they can just bring in some improvements in the business and the services so they can um, you know get the uh, services improved they can get the product line improved Uh, without having their online reputation being harmed or being defamed right so this is another business benefit of uh, this particular update uh, coming up to uh, the next one which is two level discussions with two drop downs so uh, with this update uh, 
Some of them choose a will get you know two drop downs to select disposition class and the corresponding disposition code. This is what we are doing with this particular update. Uh, we are just enabling a workbench user to have you know two different drop downs. One for uh, you know selecting a disposition class and another one for selecting the corresponding or the related disposition code. Right. So one drop down uh, which is named as disposition will let them select you know disposition class while the other one uh, which is named as a uh, sub disposition will, will let them uh, select the disposition code corresponding to the selected disposition class okay so uh, let me just uh, try to give an example uh, to make you understand this better so suppose as a workbench uh, user uh, a workbench user is you know working in a banking process where he has uh, different categories of disposition so these different categories can be uh, personal loan, uh, home loan, saving accounts, and all. So um, we can call these categories as disposition classes, right? So these major categories can be named as disposition classes. And under these disposition classes or uh, major categories, um, he would be able to see some other subcategories or sub disposition uh, like interested, resolved, appointment fixed, etc. So we can have these disposition codes in the system as well. So uh, we call uh, in a Mayo system what we call we call these sub dispositions as sub -dis as uh, disposition codes. And if an agent has to uh, you know search for a disposition class and its related disposition code, he would have to spend a lot of time otherwise to uh, searching through a single drop down. If these two drop downs, if uh, these two different drop downs are not being given in the system, he had to crawl through uh, a single uh, drop down in which he had to search for a disposition class as well as its related disposition code, right? So um, this used to impact his efficiency and productivity as well. So um, we, come, we came up with this particular update uh, to avoid this scenario. Uh, and uh, with this, agents will now get to see two different drop downs for disposition class and code. So this is about this update. Um, and only uh, relevant disposition codes will be shown uh, for the selected disposition class, as you can see on my screen. So this is the screenshot. Um, this is call disposition with two uh, drop downs. So this is how a workbench user can dispose of a call uh, with two drop downs. So this is one drop down, which lets him select a disposition class or the major category, which I, which in my example were, you know, home loan, personal loan. So these were the major categories or the disposition class. So in case he uh, had had selected this personal loan. He can, uh, he'll be able to select the related, uh, he'll be able to see the related disposition codes here as uh, interested, resolved, appointment fixed, etc. So he'll be able to select one of these. He'll be able to see only the related uh, disposition codes uh, for the disposition class that he has selected over here in the first drop down, right? So this is how we have solved this, and this is how we have enabled our workbench users to perform better and to perform in an efficient way. Uh, also, this can be seen uh, for chat disposition. Uh, for chat disposition, you can see um, here, uh, this is my disposition class and this is my disposition code. Uh, so uh, the agent or the workbench user will be able to select one of these disposition codes uh, related to this disposition class. Okay, So only the related codes will be shown here. He don't have to scroll much. He don't have to waste his time in searching through only one, uh, you know, uh, drop down. He has been given with two drop downs to solve this particular problem. Okay, so um, with this, uh, we are getting on to the next update, which is EML file support. So uh, to start with, let's understand what an EML file is. So uh, it's a common email file form format which is generated by you know clients like Out Outlook, Gmail, Thunderbird, Apple Mail, etc. So uh, what does this file contain? This file contains uh, these information, these you know pieces of information. Um, it contains subject, sender, recipient, uh, date of the message, and mail attachment. So it has all the information regarding information regarding to these uh, you know uh, information lines or these. Okay, coming up to the update, what uh, what have we covered in uh, in this particular update? So this update uh, will allow a workbench user to attach a .eml file uh, to interaction tickets while replying to the customers. 
so suppose a, as a workbench user i am replying to uh, you know customers and i need to attach an AML, aml file to my interaction ticket i'll be able to do that with this particular update earlier this file format was not supported in the system and he had to uh, you know we had to convert the file format and then we were able to uh, attach it with the interaction ticket so now what we have done is we have made this file uh, file type uh, supported in the system he'll be able to um, you know directly attach this uh, file format uh, this uh, you know file in the interaction ticket so um, also um, this will help them to view and download an eml file that is received from the customer so it works both ways he can also download and view uh, the file that has been received from the customer as well as he'll be able to uh, send or attach the file while he is replying to a customer's interaction ticket right? so yeah so uh, with this particular update a business can definitely ensure uh, improved and better contextual interactions uh, with their customers um, this is for sure uh, a business benefit so uh, apart from this uh, it also uh, can be helpful uh, it can also be helpful uh, in cases where you know cross departmental interactions are um, you know a major chunk of interactions where you know cross departments have to interact more and they have to uh, you know have some interaction tickets um so in those cases uh, this uh, this particular update can be really really useful apart from this uh, we can have uh, you know uh, better customer experience when we are enabling them to uh, send these files directly and we are able to receive their files um, as they are sending it we don't have to convert the file uh, file format and we, we are able to send these file format so it is actually enhancing um, the interactions uh, between customers and businesses it is making interactions better as well as it is enhancing our customer experience for any business right so cross department uh, cross departmental interactions is of course again a plus point um okay so um coming up to the next one um, which is enhanced byob experience or uh, bring your own board experience so uh, this update is about empowering uh, we start to understand local or preferred customer language so earlier uh, what used to happen was um, the website used to understand the customer's local language but when it was a case of uh, integrated chatbots uh, the integrated chatbots the chatbots were not able to understand the local or the preferred language of the customers right so uh, with this update what we have done is we have uh, made the integrated chatbot able understand the local language of the customers and pass this particular information about the preferred language to a I menu right so they'll be uh, so the integrated chatbots with this update will be able to understand the preferred or the local language of the customers plus they'll be able to uh, you know pass on this information to a menu okay so um, with the preferred language of the customer Uh, some other information pieces like uh, some system generated messages can also be passed to the system uh, with this update so these system uh, uh, generated messages can be like the agent has joined the chat or the agent has left the chat or the chat has been transferred uh, and so on so these kind of uh, system generated messages can also be passed on to the system by an integrated chatbot so this is also uh, achieved with this particular update now um, coming up to why we have brought this feature in Uh, we wanted to empower better communication between businesses and its customer from different geographies uh, so that you know businesses are able to uh, communicate with uh, with the customers who are coming from different geographies who are preferring different uh, languages who prefer their own local languages and they, and they want and expect from businesses that they'll be able to understand their local language and uh, um, have better interactions with such customers from different geographies so we wanted to empower businesses for that particular thing so we have achieved this from uh, this particular uh, update um of course it uh, lets uh, you know a business improve its customer experience when it is uh, letting um, the the chatbot understand the language of the customers they don't have to uh, you know uh, they don't have to think twice uh, before talking to a business before uh, you know 
before seeking help from a business for maybe support for something else they can just talk in their uh, local language they don't have to put in much efforts so it's definitely improving their customer experience also it enhances the chat capabilities in uh, byob approach so wherever the chat integrate uh, the chatbot is integrated it's actually enhancing the chat capabilities of the chatbot right so with this particular update uh, we have achieved all this um then um coming to the next one which is qa scoring enhancement so uh, what is this update okay so uh, this update actually enables analysts to view tickets attached to a call while scoring that particular call so um, as an analyst if i am scoring a call and i can be able to see all the attached tickets to that particular call i'll be able to understand the context better right so um, this will enable me or this will empower me to uh, understand it better understand the concept better understand the context better and i'll be able to provide my feedback in a right way in a better way so that the agents can also be able to uh, to upgrade their performance to you know uh, improve their performance so uh, this will uh, ensure all this so yeah coming back to this update uh, so this update will definitely Uh, allow or enable our analysts to view tickets attached to a call while scoring that particular call, right? So, in case, um, um, so suppose a call has been transferred to different campaigns to another campaign, and some tickets were created in different campaigns for that particular call. A call has been, you know, transferred to a different campaign where some other tickets have been attached to it. So, as an analyst, I'll be able to see all of these tickets, regardless of the campaign that I'm in. i'll be able to see all the attached tickets to a particular call in order to score that particular call right so um, apart from this uh, the following information can be viewed which you can see here the ticket information message voice log and voice note chat log uh, disposition and customer information about this so as an analyst i'll be able to see all this information i'll be able to see all the tickets attached to a particular call so that i can have the better context of the call and i'll be able to score better i'll be able to give the right feedback right so first uh, one this is benefit can be uh, uh, improving the scoring efficiency of the analyst as we'll be able to see all the tickets attached to it and they'll be able to understand the context better right another can be uh, he can take um, you know better decisions on the scoring uh, he'll be able to have uh, you know improved uh, he'll be able to give informed uh, feedback to the agent or workbench user so that they get the right feedback from the analyst and of course uh, in return they will always be uh, you know able to improve their performance since they get the right feedback from the supervisor or analyst so this is how we are uh, taking this in uh, for the businesses and uh, this is going to be really uh, beneficial for businesses uh, where uh, call is scoring and uh, you know this is really important for businesses so this is going to be really useful for such businesses so this is the screenshot uh, wherein we can see uh, these are the uh, details the ticket details the call details are here the scoring uh, of the call can be uh, the call can be played from here the call can be down the call recording can be downloaded from here the uh, analyst can be able to uh, the analyst will be able to uh, you know uh, score the call here there can be multiple parameters so in this screenshot we just have one parameter to score uh, but there can be multiple uh, parameters according to your business requirements so uh, as an analyst what i can do here in the same screen i can be able to uh, play the recording i'll be able to download the recording i'll be able to see all the tickets and call details and i'll be able to score the call on the same screen right this is what we are achieving with this particular update okay so uh, again uh, if you have any questions around any um, update or feature that we are discussing here you can just definitely uh, put in your queries in the qa section or the chat section and we uh, and our sme so yeah uh, again uh, the next one is uh, qa scoring in uh, vla so we have got some enhancements in this too uh, so with this update what we are doing we uh, the quality analysis will be able to see uh, will be able to score calls by listening to the call recordings in vla so what we have done uh, let me just see you, uh, show you the screenshot first so in this you can see uh, the call recording uh, can be 
uh, can be listened to or can be downloaded from the same QA scoring modal. He doesn't have to toggle between the screens while scoring the uh, scoring scoring the score call. So uh, coming back to the, uh, you know earlier what you have to ask what the user could listen to the call recording or score it at one time. Okay. So uh, but with this particular way, he will be able to perform both of these activities simultaneously. He will be able to play or download the uh, call recording. As well as he'll be able to score it uh, simultaneously. Um, so at a time he'll be able to perform both of these activities without toggling between the screens or without you know closing the QA modal for this uh, for listening to the call recording. So he doesn't have to do this anymore. He'll be able to do all these together. So uh, what does this ensure for a business? It definitely ensures uh, improved efficiency of the scorer or the analyst. Uh, as it doesn't have to, uh, you know, close the QA modal uh, to score a particular call recording, he'll be able to see uh, the call recording on the QA modal itself. He doesn't have to toggle between the screens. So again, coming up uh, to the screenshot, uh, showing you uh, this again. So this is the call recording. Uh, he'll be able to play this from here. He'll be able to download it from here, and he'll be able to score the call here only. Uh, this is QA uh, scoring modal. It doesn't have to toggle. Between Okay, so uh, the next one to it is uh, voice admin access enhancement. So with this particular update, uh, the voice admin on your setup will now be available. We will now be able to, uh, you know, create specific user role types. So what do we mean when we say that? So earlier it used to be done by support support team. Uh, so these user roles are uh, group manager's role and analyst role. So earlier, uh, when uh, the voice admin on the emerge setup uh, wanted to create users for group manager role or analyst role, he had to contact uh, emerge support team from a mail. And uh, the support team used to create these two user role types. But with this particular update, now we are enabling or empowering our uh, voice admin to create these two roles uh, himself. He is not dependent on the support team. He'll be able to do it himself, right? Okay, so um, one point to be noted here is uh, the voice admin will still not be able to create some other roles like, you know, admin, multi, uh, uh, multi CC manager and power user. But apart from these, uh, with this particular update, he'll be able to uh, create these particular users for now, uh, which are group manager and analyst user roles, right? So uh, we can definitely see some of the business benefits from this particular update. Uh, one is definitely no dependency on emerge setup, emerge uh, support team, I'm really sorry. Uh, so uh, he'll be able to create the users himself. He don't have to, he doesn't have to uh, rely on uh, Ameo's support team for that. He doesn't have to depend on Ameo's support team for that. Uh, again, uh, there's another benefit. Uh, which ensures uh, the user uh, that are well mapped with a business hierarchy. So in case he has a business hierarchy which create some specific roles, uh, uh, maybe around group manager's role and analyst role, he can uh, readily do that without waiting or without you know going to and fro for that. He doesn't have to uh, go to and fro for this role creation. He'll be able to do that uh, himself in a few minutes, right? So this is about it. Um, so uh, now let us just talk about what is a group hierarchy in a mail and uh, how the system understands the role of a group manager, right? So a group manager is a person who guides, uh, directs, or leads a small team or a group of individuals uh, in order to achieve an objective, right? He wants to achieve a particular objective. That's why he. Um, and that's why he is managing or leading a small group of um, people uh, working together for the same objective, right? So uh, we may also say a group manager is somebody who uh, chains or bridges between the supervisor and agents working in a large team. So um, for example, uh, let's try to understand this. Uh, like there's a team of 100 executives who are selling credit cards for a bank. Uh, so these executives are fluent in speaking different languages. Uh, let's say 20 out of them um, are able to speak English well. Um, 20 out of them can communicate in Arabic. And similarly, we have like uh, 
small batches or groups of 20 agents uh, who are uh, you know fluent in speaking a particular or a specific language so um, in this way we have a logical grouping of 20 agents uh, logical grouping of uh, 20 agents in uh, one group uh, and we have like we had a team of like 100 executives or 100 uh, workbench users uh, which have been uh, the team has been bifurcated or divided into a group of 20 uh, you know five groups of 20 agents or workbench users who are logically um, you know divided into teams who are uh, all these 20 who are in one group or one team are uh, fluent or you know are uh, experts in speaking a particular language so that is how we have logically divided them into teams as i was talking about this particular example in which a group of uh, a large team of 100 uh, workbench users has been divided into uh, five groups these five groups can have five group managers uh, who are leading these 20 groups uh, 20 uh, agents who are speaking a specific language or who are experts in a specific language so we can have five groups with five group managers uh, leading, um, you know, one group. So these five group managers can then be led by a supervisor. So as you can see on my screen, uh, we have a supervisor here. The supervisor is monitoring two group managers directly. These are uh, group manager one and group manager two. And these are my parent groups. So uh, we can have parent groups. And then we can further divide these parent groups into child groups. This is how we, uh, you know, define group hierarchy in a mail. So we can have a large team. We can divide it into smaller teams. And then we can divide these smaller teams into further smaller teams, right? So, uh, so the smaller teams are called as child groups. The larger teams are called as parent groups. And... Uh, all the, uh, you know, uh, this large group, uh, the, the large team, which has been divided into these groups or these teams, um, these are led by a supervisor, right? So in between the agents and the supervisors, we have introduced or chained a uh, group manager's role. So uh, then we have group managers in between these two roles, supervisors and workbench users. We can have better monitoring. We can have better you know, supervision, and we can have granular, um, you know, uh, monitoring of each agent's performance. So this can definitely ensure uh, better productivity and efficiency in the system. So this is how we define group hierarchy here. We can have, you know, a large team divided into smaller teams, and these smaller teams can further be divided into smaller teams. And these smaller teams, uh, all of these teams or groups can have a group manager. Child group uh, can have a child group manager. And parent groups can have parent group managers. We discussed this all in detail. So uh, before this, uh, let us just uh, you know understand the roles and responsibilities of a group manager. Why group managers have been introduced in between here? Why uh, the group manager is chaining uh, the you know um, the chain uh, is chaining supervisors and agents? Why there's a bridge between the supervisors and agents? So. Uh, a group manager, according to Amir, will be handling a small team or a group, right? Uh, this is how we have understood this uh, particular user role, and uh, we will try to explain it to you uh, so that you have a better idea of this particular hierarchy model. So, uh, yeah, so according to the system, uh, a group manager will be able to handle a small team or a group. Um, so, this group is going to be a logical, uh, you know, sectioning or a logical bifurcation of a larger team. So. Um, a group manager will be able to monitor his group, his particular group. So let's say here, group manager will be group manager one of this child group one will be able to manage, uh, will be able to monitor the agents working in this particular group. He'll be able to do that, right? So um, he'll be able to do live monitoring and agent monitoring um, in his particular group. A group manager will be able to perform these two activities. He'll be able to do live monitoring and agent monitoring. In his particular group, right? So uh, uh, this group is uh, very much similar to the supervisor's uh, role. So um, as a group manager, I can be able to snoop, barge, transfer, and confer live call. I can be able to do that uh, as a group manager. So this, uh, these privileges have been uh, provided for a group manager's role, right? So uh, as a group manager, I can also access 
a workbench uh, i can also use this workbench to perform the activities of an agent also let's say i have i am getting high volume of incoming calls and i feel uh, that you know i don't have uh, enough agents in my uh, team or my group so i can just switch to a workbench users a user and i can you know work as a workbench user and i can work as an agent there so this uh, is similar to supervisor's role so this uh, privilege has been given to him uh, he can also access the call back and call details page uh, of the agents in his group uh, so he'll be able to uh, you know schedule uh, call backs for the agents working in his particular group he'll be able to see the call details uh, that have been done in his particular group so uh, yeah so now uh, that we have understood the role of a group manager let's uh, proceed our discussion to uh, group hierarchy uh, so yeah let's assume um, there's a multinational company uh, which has a large number of employees working for it right so these employees are divided into a number of large teams and then these large teams so uh, with this uh, particular uh, diagram on my screen you will be able to understand this better so uh, the uh, so for a multinational company a lot of employees are working large number of employees are working for it and the employees are divided into larger teams here so these teams are further div divided or bifurcated into small teams um, you know to ensure multi level monitoring or supervision so that we can have granular view of all the things that are happening all the activities that are happening in the system that are happening in the groups right so as a supervisor if i am uh, monitoring all these agents directly i won't be able to do granular monitoring i won't be able to see everything that has been uh, done uh, i won't be able to give them the right feedback and uh, if i have you know some group managers in between uh, bridging between uh, the supervisor's role and the agent's role uh, i'll be able to uh, these group managers will be able to uh, perform you know granular monitoring of all the agents in their particular groups uh, they'll be able to uh, give feedback to them in the right way uh, there'll be informed feedback and this will actually in uh, help the super, the agents to work better and to improve their productivity and performance right so yeah so uh, when these large groups uh, when we call these large groups as parent groups as i told you uh, so let's say a large team has been divided into these uh, smaller teams so we are calling them parent groups and the the managers assigned to these groups are group managers uh, parent group managers right if there's a parent group we are calling their managers as parent group managers right then uh, these parent groups are further divided into child groups and we are calling their managers as child group managers so we have child group manager one child group manager two, right uh, then we can have uh, you know agents under these managers so these uh, child group managers will be directly handling these agents working in their team and then uh, they'll be able to give them feedback they'll be able to monitor them they'll be able to do live monitoring um, in the group uh, they'll be able to do agent monitoring in the group um, similarly the parent group manager who is managing this parent group will be able to perform all these activities in his particular parent group as well as the child groups under his parent group so as a parent group manager one i'll be able to monitor uh, my parent group one as well as i'll be able to uh, monitor and supervise child group 1 and child group 2 so the agent 1 2 3 and 4 will be managed and monitored by me not managed but monitored by me right as a parent group manager okay so uh, yeah, yeah while the child group managers can monitor their corresponding child group parent group managers can monitor the respective parent group as well as child groups under them as we have discussed now so uh, as you may also see here uh, multiple level of supervision so we have supervision level 1 here at the supervisor's level then we have supervision level 2 here supervision level 3 here and this would be the level 4 right so uh, level 1 uh, let's try to understand this again uh, so here as you can see uh, the supervisor is taking care of a large team which is hierarchical hierarchically divided uh, into multiple levels level 1 2 and 3 and then uh, these levels can be parent groups and child groups it can be further divided also if uh, 
there are requirements for that you now so we uh, we handle five levels of uh, hierarchy here five uh, you know levels of uh, grouping here so uh, as you can see uh, level 1 supervision is being done by a supervisor so this is level 1 supervision and he is monitoring two parent groups and their group managers directly he will be able to monitor these two groups and their group managers directly level 2 supervision is done by these group managers uh, which are parent group 1 and parent group 2 so these parent group manager 1 and 2 will be able to supervise and monitor these parent groups uh, their respective parent groups and the respective child groups the child groups that are coming under these particular parent groups right so these uh, group managers are supervising their own groups that is their parent group as well as the child groups and, uh, and the child group managers under them so they will be able to manage the child groups and the child group managers under them uh coming to level 3 supervision uh, which is done by child group managers here these uh, group managers are supervising their respective child groups uh, that include executives uh, shown at level 4 here so they will be uh, these child group managers will be able to uh, directly uh, monitor the agent right so this is how we have understood uh, group hierarchy and group managers role in ameo uh so uh, coming to this point uh, why uh, monitoring is not efficient without group managers role and why we should definitely have group managers uh, in the companies where we can uh, we want granular monitoring and we can have large teams so in those particular um, businesses we why we always uh, prefer to have group managers too so uh, there can be some uh, definite uh, operational issues with these particular uh, with this particular approach we don't have group managers role uh, defined in the system so uh, if the supervisor is directly um, monitoring the agents and managing them uh, he'll be like way occupied to monitor and manage them together the large team of like 100 agents or supervisor or uh, work bench users he'll be uh, way occupied to monitor them all and uh, uh, he'll need to work for extra hours he'll need to uh, you know do activities uh, around monitoring scoring and matching the agents will uh, need to work for extra hours for that and uh, of course this will also uh, lead to in in adequate monitoring uh, which is like uh, he won't be able to uh, perform monitoring all the time he will miss out on some uh, important parameters he will miss out on some important metrics and definitely he won't be able to give the right feedback to the agents and this will definitely uh, result in you know um, adverse performance of the agent they won't be able to improve their performance since they are not giving him getting the right feedback from supervisor so uh, this uh, this is why we wanted to have this particular group managers role uh, to chain uh, these two roles agents or workbench role and supervisor role so when we have group managers in between uh, the group managers can take care of smaller groups and teams uh, that are created uh, logically uh, and then uh, the can be you know conveyed to supervisor by these group managers so this is how we have understood this uh, and these were some of the operational issues that we came across um, talking to some businesses and we felt the need of this so uh, this is an example hierarchy of a banking organization uh, where an area head is leading or uh, monitoring a large team wherein uh, you know uh, he has multiple levels and groups uh, in his team he has divided his team into multiple levels and groups as we can see here the area head is uh, the sales executives at the bottom uh, to simplify it the sales executives are uh, led or monitored by relationship managers uh, and these relationship managers are then uh, led or monitored by a branch manager and the branch manager is then uh, monitored by the area head right so this is the example hierarchy that we will be talking about and we will be talking about how we are solving this with amino's uh, contacts and distribution wherein we have defined a group managers right so uh, yeah coming up to the next slide so uh, just look at this uh, this is how amino uh, solves this so uh, this is the bank and the bank has incorporated amino's contact center which has the concept of group managers role as well as a group hierarchy concept is there 
so the executives uh, will be uh, handled by will be monitored by child group managers and these child group managers will then be reporting to uh, the parent group managers and then uh, the parent group manager will be uh, monitored by this supervisor so um, mapping it from the example hierarchy uh, we had area head branch manager relationship managers and then sales executives so we have sales executives here as a workbench users in the system then we have created child groups uh, out of these agents uh, so these child group managers can be relationship managers so their respective rela re relationship managers will be uh, monitoring these agents and then uh, the feedback will be conveyed to this parent group manager so the parent group manager or the branch manager is monitoring the child group managers or the relationship managers here uh, as per the example so uh, the branch manager is then being monitored by the area head or the supervisor in a mail system right so we have mapped the user roles here uh, that's how we can solve uh, you know hierarchical uh, problems or issues or we can map uh, hierarchical uh, you know uh, bifurcations or hierarchical models according to uh, a business's requirements and we can map the user roles accordingly so uh, this is uh, how we have done that and uh, with this particular group hierarchy and group managers role uh, we wanted to you know eradicate some operational and monitoring issues why we have uh, come up with this particular thing is uh, and we also wanted to ensure high team performance we wanted the team to perform in a better way and they'll only be able to perform better when they get the right feedback from the supervisor or group managers so that's how we have uh, come up with this idea of having group managers as a bridge between the supervisor and the agent right so we wanted uh, more targets to be achieved by any business uh, the the workbench users should be able to achieve more targets and that is also uh, possible only when they get the right feedback only when they get the right uh, you know uh, path or guidance uh, by their group managers so uh, we also wanted to empower managers to provide right feedback to executives or workbench users um however uh, the management capabilities are kept for supervisors and these are not for uh, group managers here uh, some of the uh, you know management uh, activities or uh, managing activities have been restricted uh, from the group managers user role so uh, let me just uh, okay let me just walk you through this okay so the lead management the prompt management dnc management user assignment or uh, holiday or working hour configuration so uh, these management activities can only be done by the supervisor and not by the group manager so the group manager can't do all of these activities however he will be able to uh, you know uh, access the call details and call back pages he'll be able to schedule callbacks for the agents working in his group he'll be able to uh, monitor uh, uh, in uh, live monitoring tab as well as in the live uh, as well as the agent monitoring tab he'll be able to access that also he'll be able to access the reports to see the performance of the agents and he'll be able to perform more like a supervisor but yeah the management restrictions the management activities are still restricted from this user group Uh, this is all that we had for this uh, supervisors uh, sorry uh, sorry for this group managers role